Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAPS at Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 23, Questions 72 to 74. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at resonance. And the great thing about this unit is that we see in the stimulus, Resonance is, is explained pretty well and all the rules about um, how to identify structures that are resonant is out, is written there in plain English. So um, I think with my explanation, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what a resonance structure is because it's nicely written there in the stimulus, but I think it's important we understand what an acid and a base is. So that's going to help us answer question 74. And the reason why I want to focus on this is because I've noticed that a lot of students struggle to conceptualize what's happening in acid-base reactions, especially with uh, resonance structures. So let's just begin by uh, defining what an acid and a base are. So the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases, um, so acids were described as uh, molecules that contain protons and they can obviously donate the proton in an aqueous solution, whereas ba bases were defined as uh, molecules that possess hydroxide ions and they can donate the hydroxide ions into the solution. That theory was limited because not all bases had obviously hydroxide ions. So that's where um, the bronsted lowry theory came in, where it states acids donate protons in solution, whereas bases accept protons in solution. And again, um, this theory again was limited because not all bases accept protons. So that's where the Lewis theory of acids and bases came in. So the Lewis theory of acids and bases is um, reliant on exchange of electrons, not necessarily protons. So you've probably seen it written in, say, textbooks as, say, the proton is just, say, A. We've got our base here. Or so let's say the, the acid is going to be our A+. plus. So the base comes along and donates its electrons to the acid. So if I give you just a quick example, say a proton here, and then we've got our NH3. So you can see that the NH3 is the base because it's donating its electrons, and the proton is going to be the acid because it's accepting the electrons. So that's the, that's the idea for the Lewis um, acids and bases. And it's important to know it's not just an aqueous solution, it could be in other liquid solutions. So um, before we dive into this unit, I think it's important just keep in mind uh, I'll discuss why resonance structures are important for acidity and basicity in question 74, but this is something that we need to uh, cover in depth because I know a lot of students struggle to conceptualize what's happening here. So if we move just into question 72, I'll clear the screen here. Uh, so 72 says, which of the following presents a pair of resonance structures? So you've probably read by now the rules that must be applied in writing resonance structures. So if we take a look at A, A is clearly a, uh, they're pairs of isomers. So you can see that um, they look like, uh, they've got the exact same molecular formula, it's just that the in space they've been shifted around, the atoms have been shifted around. So that's not a resonance structure, again, because we had to have moved hydrogen atoms across and in, um, in resonance structures, we're not moving protons. We're not breaking sigma bonds here. All we're doing is moving electrons. So A is incorrect. B is a completely different molecule altogether. So that's why B is just incorrect. Um, so we can scratch that off. Um, C, C is the correct answer because if we take a look, I'll just draw the carbonyl group. Um, oh, sorry, the carbon of the hydroxide group attached. So if we take a look here, remember in resonance structures, what happens is obviously we're going to have to move our electrons over to the other side. So if this place is a vacuum here, there's no electrons, so the double bond comes off to satisfy the oxygen, obviously to make it neutral now. So what we're left with is a C. So because we moved the electrons, we're going to starve the carbon of electrons here, and now we've got a neutral oxygen. So that's why C is correct. D is incorrect because remember, um, the, the pair of electrons, they can't be shifted beyond the adjacent atom. So you can't just have 
a carbon here and then all the way over here a, a negative in the resonance structure. So let's say yada, 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 let's say six carbons across or something. You can't you can't have that electric uh, charge shifted all the way across. It has to be adjacent to the atom next to it. So that's why D is incorrect. So if we move over to question 73, 73 is actually a, an easy one if you if you read the rules. It, it just says which of these resonance structures is going to be the major contributor. If we take a look at the um, uh, the rules, it states in rule two that resonance structures in which an atom carries more than its quota of electrons are not contributors to the real structures. So it just means we're going to look for the uh, molecule that's neutral. Because if it's neutral, um, it's not going to be carrying more or less than the electrons it's supposed to be carrying. So straight away, you can see that the neutral molecule in this instance is going to be 2. So the answer for 73 has to be B. So 73 is B. Now, moving on to the last question. Now, this is something that is hard to conceptualize, but let's let's go through this systematically and logically. So I'll just draw our cyclohexanol and our phenol here. So let's just draw actually. Hopefully I can draw it. Hopefully my artistry skills. Oh, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Um, so we're going to go O negative. Yep, and let's just draw now our phenol group. So it's going to be OH, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, I know my drawing is poor, um, but bear with me. So, uh, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the big difference between the two structures is obviously resonance. So the phenol group has resonance in its structure. So the charge of the electron, so when we say it's delocalized, so we mean that the electron is delocalized across the whole molecule. So you can see here, most of the charge is going to be localized up here. Now, this is important to note when we're talking about acid and base theory, because if most of the charge is going to be localized up here, remember a base donuts electrons and an acid accepts electrons. So if we take a look now, so this is going to be, let's say, our acid, and this is going to be our conjugate base. So same thing here, our acid, our conjugate base. So if we look at our conjugate bases, remember, all the electrons are going to be localized up here in a non-resonant structure, whereas with a resonant structure, the conjugate base, the electrons are going to be local or delocalized throughout the whole structure. So if we think about it logically then, if we're going to localize most of our electrons up here with the, say, oxygen atom, that means that the conjugate base is going to be very strong because it's going to be more likely to donate its electrons. So if we've got a very strong conjugate base, then our acid is going to be weak. It's going to be poor. So the acid is going to be less likely to accept electrons because it's going to have obviously a lot more electrons up here so it doesn't need to so it's pretty happy to stay in this form it doesn't want to donate its proton if you think of it in the bronsted lowry theory whereas if you come down to this molecule here the conjugate base because the electrons are delocalized throughout the whole system it's going to actually weaken the base form because now that the electrons shared across the whole system it's going to be less likely to donate electrons. So that means the base is going to be weak and we're going to have a stronger acid because now that the electrons shared, the proton is more likely to go away. So we're more likely to lose our proton here, which means it's going to be more acidic. So it's going to be more likely that the um, acid here is going to accept electrons. So we want to accept electrons up here. 
So that's why it's going to be a stronger asset. So try to conceptualize this. I know it's hard to conceptualize for some students, but if you think about it this way, you'll see why this is the weaker asset and this is the stronger asset. So if we take a look at 74, the options say which is the following best explains why phenol is a much stronger asset. The answer has to be C because the negative charge on the phenoxide ion is delocalized, right? So it's delocalized over the benzene ring. And it's exactly what we explained here. So the answer has to be C. So all the other options are incorrect. So or, well, they're either incorrect or don't actually explain why um, the phenol is a stronger acid than, than cyclohexanol. So if you follow this principle and this logical reasoning, you'll get the answer. So look, if, if you're still struggling to understand uh, why this is the case, you can post your comments or queries in the comment section below, or um, you can contact us directly. I mean, we'd love to help you. Chemistry is our bread and butter. Thanks for your time. Bye now.